Good evening and thanks for being with us. I'm Nina Sperano. And I'm John Erickson. The fight for control of the U.S. Senate might come down to Wisconsin. The current race between incumbent Senator Ron Johnson and current Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes has kept the state in the national spotlight as our airwaves are flooded with ads trying to persuade you. Democrats see this race as a chance to flip a seat and expand their majority. But if Johnson is reelected, Republicans see this as an opportunity to regain control of the Senate. Tonight, in an NBC 26 exclusive interview, we're going on the record with Senator Ron Johnson. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you taking the time. With less than six weeks to go before the midterm election, Senator Ron Johnson is in the home stretch of his fight for a third term as the senior senator of Wisconsin. I know this is kind of a late decision for you. You had uh, cemented the idea of running for two terms and retiring, and then you decided to jump in for, uh, to run for a third. I, I mean, think it's really because how divisive this country has become. You know, as I travel around Wisconsin, I, I'll tell you, people who support me are just tired of the division. They're tired of the anger. Um, I, I find it exhausting. In a time where it just seems like this nation's coming apart, I, I really felt I'm, I'm there. I've, I've had success trying to find areas of agreement, um, and I think I can be helpful. On the campaign trail, Senator Johnson is building on his movements over the past 12 years in office and defending his track record. And as a result of my efforts, again, 95% of American businesses, the, the mom and pop shops, Main Street businesses got a tax cut so they could stay competitive with the big guys. And so many of them come up to me and say, that's, you know, we survived the pandemic. Now, the way that's being twisted in our vicious political world is I did a tax cut for myself and a couple of supporters. I mean, nothing could be further from the truth. The campaign, the, all the ads, the $160 million of ads that it's are grotesque spent on how much is spent. The, and the ads, the mudslinging against you, what would you say would be the most grotesque that's out there that are the most well, false scaring, scaring seniors. I don't want to cut Social Security and Medicare. I've never said that. Never would. What, what elected official ever would say that? And yet Democrats every cycle say that some Republican candidate wants to cut or take away Social Security. It's a complete lie. The Republican Party has, has changed, no doubt, over the last few years. It seems like before it was more policy driven. It seems like it's more and more and more personality driven. Do you think You've reinvented your, your personality, your persona to reflect that. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm the exact same guy other than I have more experience than, you know, as I was when I first ran. I think what's changed is the realignment of the party. I think the Democrat Party now has become the party of the elite. Uh, they're the ones representing the big tech media, you know, the big tech media social, or social media giants. Um, they're the ones you know, representing billionaires, we're the ones, like I just said, in my tax cuts, you know, I've, I fought for the small mom and pop shops, the, the mainstream businesses. We're, we're the ones uh, fighting for the, the, the working men and women of this country. Crushing inflation is just one of several critical issues for both sides in this election cycle. One Senator Johnson calls a tax increase on the middle class. Do you think there's any way that both parties are going to agree on any policy to make it any better? Well, they have to stop spending money on things that uh, we shouldn't be spending money on. I mean, they just passed this reconciliation package, 100% pirates, and $369 billion. Now, I remember when $100 billion was a lot of money. You know, unfortunately, you've got one, one party that just wants to buy votes. I mean, that's what the student loan forgiveness was, trying to buy votes before the election. And you know, I would say it's, it's a bipartisan problem in terms of wanting to spend money. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm part of a small group of people that continue to raise the alarm that this massive deficit spending, completely out of control, our growing debt, that threatens all these government programs. Coming up in the next segment, Senator Johnson on January 6th. Moving on to the alternate slate of electors. Uh, of course, we're going to talk about that. And I know you've said publicly that it's a non-issue what is. happened with the slate of electors and your involvement. I, no, I, I, I virtually, you can't, I had no involvement. I received either three texts and I sent two texts or the other way around. I mean, my involve, you know, my, my lack of involvement was seconds worth of texting. But that's uh, still I, involvement. More from our one-on-one -on -one interview as Senator Ron Johnson goes on the record. 